last uh, the last uh, operation, the last part of the UAS operations is operation by public entities. This is, for example, a publicly funded university like NC State. It can be a law enforcement agency or fire department uh, or any other fed federal or state government agency. Uh, and they have two options. They may uh, follow the same requirements uh, and operating rules as uh, business users. So what we covered under the uh, part of the commercial UAS operations, or they have a special um, way to obtain a um, certificate of authorization, so-called COA. Uh, so they can apply for a blanket uh, of COA and uh, after evaluation, they may be granted and operate under different rules. This is a tool um, that can be obtained only by the government entities. What I mentioned before, a federal or state government agencies, um, public uh, colleges, universities, or law enforcement. NC State does have a COA, um, multiple COAs um, that we, uh, one of them will be flying in soon. It, it, and it's only used uh, not only by pu public entities, but for uh, public um, UAS operations. And it allows uh, allows flights uh, at or below 400 feet, uh, feet in Class G airspace nationwide and the self-certification of the UAS pilot. It is also possible to obtain an emergency COA under special circumstances. This is the COA that is obtained for the Lake Wheeler area that will be flying uh, somewhere here. It's uh, below Tryon Road, and here there is Lake Wheeler Road, and in south from campus. And so the COAs are issued for a specific uh, period of time. Usually, it's two years, and each COA uh, include special provisions unique to each proposal, like defined block of airspace, time of the day, and the UAS that can be used. How to apply for COA? Uh, since 2009, uh, FAF um, take, uh, has taken steps to streamline the application process and transition online, but the process in reality is still long and pretty painful. Um, here you have the link to the FAF website for more information how to apply for COA online. Here at NC State, we are fortunate enough to have the NGAT, the Next Generation Transportation, that already uh, obtained the COA that we will be flying in, and they are also experts and uh, lead as um, um, they're like a consulting uh, people for uh, obtaining the COA if you are. Um, if you are eligible, if you are uh, working for the government agency and you want to perform public uh, operations. The average uh, co-op processing time is less than 60 days. It used to be much more. Um, right now, they, they, uh, man they managed to lower it to 60 days. And in an emergency and life-threatening situation, there is, uh, it is possible to have the process done uh, quicker. And you have here the sample uh, COA application. It's all um, it's all online. So uh, you can see here how the sample COA application, how it's filled with, with the data. Um, and the link to the blank one, to the one that you can actually fill, is um, under the FAF website that I, I pointed to before. You can see there are a lot, a lot, a lot of parts. You can, you have to, um, uh, you have to um, describe your UAS, you have to describe the operator, you have to include a lot of details about the operations that you're going to be performing. And the last part that I, uh, I mentioned before, the tricky uh, use that is not contained by uh, these three uh, div div divisions uh, that the FAA FAF established is the educational use. As for example, we are using it for the course. As you hear our team on the, uh, I think two years ago, 
uh, for the first time offering the class. Uh, so the new legal interpretation from the FAA from uh, uh, 2016 is that the UAS can be used by students in, uh, in accredited uh, educational institutions are part of this the cor uh, coursework as under the recreation guidelines. So we are uh, being a recre recreational users and we don't need a certificate, um, the pilot, uh, remote pilot certificate. But if any of the data will be used for research efforts, uh, that will uh, link to the faculty members that are compensated for their duties. This no longer is uh, the recreational uh, use. This is the uh, commercial use because research also brings money. And also the people that are conducting this research are being paid for it. So if any data that we will collect or in the future be used for the research purposes, like you would like to publish a paper, we would need to officially and legally operate under the part 107 rule. And we would need to have someone uh, that has the uh, certificate, uh, the remote pilot certificate, which is our case, so no worries. There are also UAS best practices that are not maybe rules established by FAA, but it's good to know because there is a lot of confusion and a lot of people that are flying drone around, drones around. So if you can, just tell other people you'll be taking pictures or video before you do. Uh, and if someone asks you not to, like in, in, in a reasonable way that I'm here at the beach and um, I'm partially naked and I want it to be anywhere. So um, if you if the, this will violate their privacy, you should respect uh, their request. Uh, also, when you're flying over people's uh, um, private property, if you can avoid it, if you can just fly around, this is the uh, easiest way to do that. Um, you can also ask them to not have uh, any problems. Uh, so don't gather personal data for no reason uh, and keep it, no, don't keep it longer than you have to. It also saves the uh, space on your hard drive. <laughs> um, it, and if you keep the sensitive data uh, about people, uh, you should secure them uh, against the loss or, or theft. Just think about it like you would know about yourself. If you, there are pictures about your property that is uh, sensitive and you don't want it to be uh, mm, disclosed to uh, some third party, then you treat the same people uh, that uh, are, all, are um, paying you for the services. And if someone asks you to delete the personal data you've gathered, if just un unless you have a good reason not to do that, uh, like you hear here, here uh, see the important note uh, about the news gatherers. If you don't have such important reason, just better to just respect uh, the request. And the last one is just um, pretty obvious: don't harass people with your drone. And there is no unless it's fun. It's just don't. <laughs> uh, here you have a couple really useful resources. I'm going to um, stop at each one because it is really important so you will know where to find them. Here we have the US airspace map, the electronical version of uh, the charts contained on the charts. And you can find um, Raleigh. And you can see here, uh, when you click at the uh, at the area that is covered, that this is the airport. You can have a phone number to this uh, airport, and you see that it requires uh, airport notification um, and all the information about that. Uh, so instead of uh, um, instead of studying the charts. Uh, of course, I highly recommend studying the charts, but this is the easy way to access it, and also the air map has uh, the um, um, mobile app. You can download it and it will show your location. It will show 
um, in which area you are and it, it can also um, provide you with steps and checklists what to do to fly legally uh, in this area. When I moved uh, and zoomed in a little bit, you can see the Western Boulevard. Here is uh, the Jordan Hall. And uh, in more details, you can see that there are more places to avoid. If you click on it, you can see this is the prison. As I mentioned uh, before, these facilities will be included uh, as uh, no, no flying zones. There are also schools uh, that you have, to, uh, uh, you have to avoid. Usually there is each of these uh, orange circles is the um, is the place that you have to uh, be uh, cautious about and check. Um, you can see on the satellite exactly. Yeah, where we are here. Okay. The next resource I have for you is the Know Before You Fly website. You've been introduced to, to it uh, already on the last lecture. The website is really user friendly. Um, you can see you, can get, you have a lot of resources there. Um, uh, the facts uh, also provides a lot of links. And um, also it divides all the operations for the public entities, for business users and for recreational users. So you have it divided uh, just like we did uh, at the lecture. Um, there is also another link here to how to register your drone. Um, uh, as I told you previously, the, re the, um, the regulation that you have to register your drone is uh, back. Um, and you can have here all the information like how to register uh, your drone. There are special rules for operating UIS in North Carolina. Um, the each state can ha uh, is um, each state's op uh, state operates under the federal regulations, but NCDOT, Department of Transportation, has a special division of just uh, the unmanned aerial systems, and they not only provide information and uh, deal with the certificates but also organize workshops and provide um, a lot of information. Here you can see the recreational government and commercial, uh, the same division everywhere. Additionally, if you want to uh, fly a drone, you, have, you can have a quick, quick quiz here if you, are, um, if you know everything you need. And what's also important, there is aviation weather center when you can have really detailed information that we can uh, find uh, the met decode the meta um, messages uh, just like I uh, described before that are uh, one of the questions for the uh, for the um, certificate um, to decode uh, the meta you can see here it's gonna just we're already in North Carolina Yes, and if you click, it will show me the mysterious matter uh, message. So this is it for the uh, for the lecture, and I'm looking forward to um, to seeing your uh, answers to questions for uh, the assignment for uh, so click on the website assignment about answering uh, questions the real questions from uh, from the UAS uh, remote pilot certificate